Hello, uh, this is Jan here. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching this video. We're going to cover uh, some simple things here today, but um, you know, I don't want to freak you out because it is a little bit technical, so I'm trying to simplify it. Essentially, what we're talking about is uh, elements of what goes on uh, with an SEO audit. So if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, consultant, you know, owner, operator, uh, small or large, um, you probably, well, you know what SEO is, search engine optimization, and you probably know that an audit is a very, very valuable and important exercise that needs to take place uh, for you to drive more traffic to your business. And certainly if you do this right, uh, you will increase not only traffic, but also sales. And so that's my goal here today to kind of take you through it. And if you haven't seen or heard much of me lately, it's because I've been heads down, very busy with the agency. And if you're looking at the screen right here, uh, this is actually an older screenshot here with uh, uh, the Google uh, books from Entrepreneur Magazine. This is one of my first books with Entrepreneur Magazine. Uh, this one right here, The Ultimate Guide to Search Engine Optimization. And uh, after that, uh, two more books, so three total. And uh, uh, I love this because here we are uh, between uh, some of the top players in the uh, AdWords space as well. Um, and uh, really, though, what I wanted to share with you today is a little bit of a process. Um, as you know, an SEO audit can be quite involved. Uh, you know, I've worked on SEO audits from small to large. Um, you know, hundreds of thousands of pages in the Google index that need to be uh, visited and understood along with all the movements that happen through your analytics, right? Your back end. A lot of people talk about, you know, the front end and the visual things that you see. There's so much behind the scenes. In fact, the most important is to understand and recognize that while traffic and rankings are important, it's essential that you actually understand the entire process, the customer journey, if you will, uh, all the way through to your sales and back end, right? So if you talk about marketing and sales, you know, inbound traffic has to go somewhere. What does that look like? And what's the movement? What levels of friction are there for that person or persons to move through uh, from search uh, to the end goal, right? From submitting a form or to taking action on, on a certain click. Um, that eventually ends up in your back end, whether it's an automated sales process or if it's actually appointments and your sales team is picking up uh, phones uh, and or your CRM system that notifies them to call uh, them back, automation with email, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of things here that need to be done right for an audit to be effective. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about an SEO audit for the front end, which of course uh, does take a look at your website and assets that you've deployed. And it's not just HTML pages, it's also PDFs, you know, documents that you pushed out there, images. As, as you know, uh, Google does have what's called universal search as the concept of, you know, m blending is essentially multiple assets on the front page. So it could be, you know, uh, images, could be books and news. Uh, it can be uh, certainly videos and, of course, knowledge graph on the right, uh, local search, uh, you know, glo global search, if you will, international aspects. And uh, really, when you look at this, it can get quite complex. So I wanted to just drill it down for you as my dog is barking in the back uh, to some simple things that I like to look at just right out the gate. Now, I mentioned Google Analytics. That is one of the first things that I like to look at because it's going to be very important for you to understand and recognize levels of traffic, where it's coming from, the navigational aspects of that traffic, and also how you can optimize certain pages. Now, analytics is not just one piece of it, right? You know, it, all of these things are connected. Another one is the Google Search Console, the good old Webmasters Console, right, from back in the day. Actually, the URL is still called that, uh, google.com forward slash webmasters, right? So all of these things, when they're connected and looked at and reviewed and consolidated, essentially, uh, to get a clean picture of what's actually happening from keywords to content to links. Uh, of course, these things are essential for SEO. It's always been that way. Uh, back in 1998, when Bryn and Page opened up the whole world for search by recognizing there's a citation going on here with the trusted links, the backlinks, right? The referring incoming links essential to um, quality rankings, not just any ranking, but quality rankings with people actually know what they're looking for. They find it um, through research very specifically. Uh, whether it's an e-commerce or a transaction-based type of query, uh, more of an informational type of search, et cetera, et cetera. But 
Uh, we're not going to go into all of that other than right now. I'm going to show you something pretty cool. This is, by the way, one of the things that uh, uh, we can provide for you. And, and I guess this is a pitch right here <laughs> for why you should click on the next step in this, uh, in this ad um, to uh, take a look at what I got going. But before you do that, uh, let me just share with you uh, this right here. So this is an example from a company we've been working with where we're going through and actually watching for specifics within each of these areas. Uh, we like to break these down by types, importance, status. And uh, you can see here, um, you know, hopefully you can zoom in a little bit here, make the window larger. Uh, but you can see we, we are looking at um, different things here at the bottom, right? So we're talking about internal links, links in general, on-page duplicate content, front and mobile friendly page speed. There's a lot that goes into this. Um, but essentially, once we rank these by type, important, and status, uh, we can actually look at the URLs, the counts, and find out, okay, what is it that essentially needs to be recognized as an opportunity for optimization? And in this case, we see that we need to investigate 1,042 URLs because they contain uppercase, right? If you don't know uh, about this and you have pages that are sitting out there, in a server that's not configured to handle upper, lowercase, etc. well, then you're going to get a break here, right? Now, this one alone is just sort of a standalone item. It doesn't, it doesn't count as much unless you tie it to analytics, as I keep saying, right? Uh, because if you can see and if you can track these 1,042 URLs and you recognize, yes, they do have traffic and we are capturing, capturing them in analytics, it's probably not a huge issue, right? That's why we say investigate right here. Uh, here's the next one here, insight, right? This is more of a, uh, a sort of an informational uh, type of um, uh, item here. A query string contains paginated parameters. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know, if you know anything about the internet, especially in e-commerce, um, you have the levels of pagination happening. You know, are they set up correctly with the, the, rels, um, uh, the relationships inside the code? Uh, are they actually being indexed correctly? Uh, is there any duplicate content that's coming up here? Are they actually, as you're navigating through, are they actually, uh, you know, being recognized as valuable search pages for you? All of this needs to be uh, understood and recognized. Uh, the next one here issue high fix, right? So we noticed that there was an uh, important uh, deal here and sure enough, broken internal URLs, right? There's nine of them here. Well, this could be a major hole for you if you have traffic that's going through and it basically just drops off here, right? You should know what this is and you should fix it. And if they haven't been audited properly, then you need to make sure that you do, right? So I'm just taking you through a couple here. So let's take a look at the next uh, tab here. And by the way, just a pitch here, if you click on this ad, I do have a really my special virus uh, related offer here for you to get this audit with a explanation video and uh, more details through this doc. And also you get a PDF as well that explains all, of thing, all these things for your site. And uh, I'm doing it at, uh, it's really over 95% reduced cost. Uh, these audits can go quite big, as I mentioned. And the costs can also be uh, quite uh, elaborate, but uh, if you click over, you'll see what I what I got going there. But let me let me just dig in a little further here. So, uh, type important status right? Okay, so let's look at this opportunity. Uh, the importance is high. Okay, well, let's see what it is. Two hundred ninety URLs has only one followed internal linking URL. Well, what does that mean? Well, basically means exactly that. Well, how can we oppor You know, what's the opportunity here? Well, you know, we can create multiple, as you know, um, uh, internal links are very important, but you have an opportunity to self rank by putting out uh, content and links that essentially are topically um, related to each other uh, that uses href anchor texts to elevate other pages within your own ecosystem, which is your website, right? So we wanna basically find out what these are and if there's an opportunity to drive link juice or, or, or equity from uh, page A to page B to page C, et cetera. And not necessarily in that order, but you get my drift, right? We, we know and understand that this is an important thing, but also for users. Um, we talk a lot about traffic here, uh, very important. We talk a lot about rankings, very important, of course, of course. Uh, but truly, what's the user experience like, right? Because here we may dissect, dissect this a little further and find out 
that there's not a lot of navigation going on here, meaning people are not following up or finding the information very easily. Uh, this should be improved. The next one here, issue, hi, fix, right? URL is orphaned and was not found by the crawler. Well, these are pages that are dropped off and not part of the crawlable website architecture. We do provide a lot of information over here on what that means so that you can actually address this yourself through the audit. Um, the next one here is an opportunity. Okay, so we have an medium importance here and status is optimized, has incoming uh, followed links that do not use a descriptive anchor text. As you know and understand from audits, um, or from, uh, from the search engines, anytime you use a descriptive anchor text, and it may not always have a, a keyword anchor text associated with it, but it's something that's related to that content on the page, well, that can help boost not only usability of it because you're guiding the users uh, through your pages, uh, but it also lifts the other pages that this po link points to, right? So you wanna look at that. The next one, opportunity, medium, optimized, 79 URLs has one or more outgoing follow links with non-descriptive um, uh, anchor text, right? So we drill in and look a lot at the links. Uh, links are important, important, important. Um, in fact, you know, a lot of folks, uh, you know, out there in internet land focus on content. And yes, not un undervaluing that by any means, uh, but you need to understand that links are essential uh, for navigation, as I said, for traffic, for passing that equity across and for matching up, uh, uh, you know, anchor text to resulting pages, whether it's internal or external uh, to your world. So let's take a look at on page here. Um, potential issue, uh, low, but hey, needs to be investigated. Okay, 330 URLs have multiple H1 tags. Well, what does this mean? Well, it means that you're essentially stacking the H1 tag, which is basically an HTML internal tag for uh, creating typically headlines, right, or, or headers. Um, and uh, this may be an issue for you. Uh, this is, again, not a critical thing. That's why we put here low importance, but you need to check this. Is there a way that you could elevate this by having one key H1 tag. And if you need it to look or feel the same as that H1 tag, you can apply some CSS to make this uh, flow a little bit better and not stack the H1 tags. Now, this is not a huge issue, as I said, but it's something that we'd like to look at. And if it's an easy change, we'll do it. Um, and the next one, opportunity, low, optimize, okay. 322 URLs, title tag length is too short. Okay, title tags are not necessarily the ones that I would just jump on. And again, that's why we put low here. Uh, but all of these have an aggregate value. Just like if you went out every day and you had burgers, french fries, and, you know, Coca-Cola, eventually it's going to stack up as a negative indicator for your body, for your health, and for your future, right? Same thing here. We look at all these things and find out which ones are the ones we can address quickly and fast that has an immediate impact which are the ones that we would then milestone it out and phase it in as other uh, opportunities that we can tweak, right? Like for instance here, opportunity, low, optimize, 307 URLs, meta description length, too short. Well, you know, as you know, uh, Google uh, actually will assign a meta description to the page based on that uh, search results at that moment, but it will also look at what those meta tags are. Uh, if you don't have those uh, fully qualified or described, um, you're going to lose out here, um, as well as, if, frankly, having a, a short a meta description means you just haven't addressed it. In this case, uh, they haven't addressed it. It's too few, uh, uh, too few characters here. So, uh, again, we don't have to go through all of these, but um, suffice it to say, these are all important in the context of an SEO audit. But ultimately, and I'll close out with this, what you need to do is to book appointment, book an appointment here. You basically click in. There's nothing to buy on the first click. It's just your name and email. That comes into us and to me, to my office. And we'll jump on a call, and fill out a couple of simple things on that form there, jump on that call, and uh, I'll be happy to jump on. We, I'll take you through some of this stuff. Uh, you know, just glad to help out. It's a tough time for, uh, for most businesses or for many businesses, I should say, online right now. That's why I'm doing this to kind of help you out. And uh, hey, if this is a good fit, sure, we may be able to work again uh, together in the future. But uh, ultimately, I just want to show you uh, the level of detail that goes into an audit um, just by uh, uh, outlining a couple of things that we look at. And 
And again, some of these things that we run here come out of tools and you can run some of these tools yourself. But a tool is just a tool. The strategies and the implementation of this and to be able to phase it in at the right time, milestone it out correctly, uh, make sure that it matches up with your overall business goals, right? So it's not just, hey, I'm ranking. Hey, I moved from page three to page one. You guys are awesome. That's not good enough. We need to make sure that that actually is the right traffic to your funnel that converts to sales and so that your business grows, right? I mean, that's why we're all doing this stuff. So, uh, but uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I just love it. And uh, hey, I appreciated uh, putting this uh, video together for you as well. And uh, very much appreciated you joining today. I uh, hope this has been a little bit helpful. And uh, yeah, go ahead and click that uh, uh, button there and uh, we'll see you on the next one.